Hi, everyone. Thank you, Ken, for the presentation. And I'm super happy to be here today uh, to talk to you about how, to, how we, everybody can contribute to core framework of React Native. And then we are going to use CodeGen as a working example to show you like, the ropes of it. But first, I want to spend a couple of words about myself. Um, I'm Ricardo. I'm a software engineer at Meta. My background is on iOS engineering, so I'm a mobile developer first. And I'm currently working on a React Native Core Framework, bringing the new architecture to the open source. Um, I also put there my contacts, so you have my GitHub, my LinkedIn, Twitter, although I don't expect tweets because I don't tweet very much, and my Medium blog because I love to write about iOS and Swift, and please reach out, ask questions. I'd love to like connect with every one of you and talk about iOS and React Native. So um, let me help me a, a little bit. How many of you have ever opened a PR against uh, the main repository of React Native? Okay, okay. So, React Native is an open source project, as we everyone and everyone knows. Uh, but it's not just that; it's quite a big one. Like, I'm gonna show you some numbers, but it's very big. Um, let's start with the number of commits. We have more than twenty-seven thousand commits, which is kind of impressive. And um, the first commit uh, arrived in 2015, so it's like eight years of a framework lifetime, which is a good amount of time, I guess. And as you can see, you can imagine, like, commits piles up. It's not just about the amount of commits, it's also widely used. Like, we have from GitHub 1.3 million users, and 2,500 contributors, which is kind of impressive. And as you can see with the release, well, this day, data is a little bit outdated because we did 71.8 a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, but we have 71 releases out there, uh, which is quite a bit. If you don't trust for any reason GitHub data, we also have data from NPN. And again, NPN told us that we have 1.3 million weekly downloads, which is a lot. Another question that we got asked several times uh, is who is using React Native? Well, we are a React Native conference, so we kind of have a rough idea of who is using it. But on the website, we have a section that is the showcase where we collect some, a subset of companies and applications using React Native. And starting from like the usual suspects, Meta is actually using React Native in the Facebook app and in other apps that we, uh, we published, like for example, the App Manager or the Oculus apps. Microsoft, as we know, because like, there are talks from Microsoft today, use React Native in the Office Suite and in other applications. But React Native is not used only by big companies. There are a plethora of smaller companies that use React Native in their application. And again, we have, this is a small subset of application and companies that I took from our website. Um, there are tens of thousands of other apps in the stores, like all the people here that work with consultancy and are using React Native knows how many applications are out there with React Native. So if you like crawling on social media, look for, questions about, oh, but are you still using React Native in production, or is it still lively, or are Meta really still supporting that? The answer is yes. Like, we develop that, we work with that, and we encourage everyone to use it in production. And you don't need to be scared about the size of the framework, because everyone can contribute to the framework, and we actually welcome contribution a lot. We, we really think that is a healthy way to make sure that Everybody's happy with our framework. Everybody can use it with all your use cases as well, not just what we use it internally at Meta. And it's not that hard to contribute to the framework. There are several ways in which we, you can contribute. And not all of them involve writing code. So 
If you don't feel like, if you want like an easy way into the contribution world, one way in which we are really happy for you to contribute is using our website. There is a section that is guides and you can just like run through the, to the guides and doing all the steps and figure out if like there is something that is not clear or something that we can improve or like, I don't know, maybe some steps got outdated because th things tend to change and submit a simple pull request to the uh, GitHub repository that backs up the website. Standard GitHub flow, you just open a PR there, you fix some text and we merge it basically. React Native is not just uh, the core framework, Another way in which we welcome contribution is with libraries. So let's say that you have a use case that you think is meaningful for other people. You can contribute to the whole ecosystem and not just to the core framework by publishing your own library. On the website, we have a small guide on how to package your library or which is, could be a module or a component in a way that can be consumed by other React Native application. And we also have the React Native directory website where we keep track of all the libraries that are available. So if you are developing a React Native app and you need to look up for a libraries, this is a good resource also. Another way in which you can be extremely useful for everyone is by triaging issue. As you can see here, we have 1.7K issue that we are trying to keep, keep up with. But as we know from previous slides, like 1.3 million people are using the framework so you can imagine how many issues they can open. Uh, we try to do our best to keep up with them, but sometimes, like, no, uh, it's hard to keep up with everything. We also prepare release candidates before every release. So our release cycle is pretty convoluted, but basically um, before a release, we tend to release release candidates and we ask for people to test. This is like, can, uh, last week before the conference, we prepared RC3 for 0.72, which we thought would be the release candidate before releasing 0.72 stable. And we needed people to test it. And it's extremely valuable for us, this testing phase, because like, for example, exactly for RC3, some people reported some problems with the latest RC. So we already know right now that we are probably going to do an RC4 before releasing 072, but that will not be possible without other people like you contributing and trying it out, the, the golden candidates before the actual release. And the way that you can like report something that is not going well for a release candidate is through this uh, working group, which is React WG slash React Native releases. We have discussion threads called road to next version. And you can just like leave a comment saying, hey, this thing stopped working for this risk candidate. And we'll try to address that. Finally, like what we all were expecting right now is contribution through code. React Native is composed by several languages from low level languages like C++ to higher level languages like JavaScript. And so we are pretty sure that we can find a way for everybody to like chime in and contribute with their knowledge. We are trying also to make it extremely easy. We know that the framework is complicated. The framework has several layers of abstraction. So what we do is we try to create these uh, issues that are uh, indicated with an umbrella. We call them umbrella issues. Uh, we did the, you, we used umbrella issue a lot of time in the past and we plan to use them more often in the future. And they, so for example, in the past we used to have umbrella issues for like improving our React Native bot or to bring web styles from like the web world into a proper implementation for React Native or even the monorepo initiative that we uh, concluded before 72 uh, was like, st it started with an umbrella issue where many people contributed like uh, moving part of the code base in a way that is more monorepo specific. And they all share the same kind of uh, structure. And I want to use like CodeGen as a working example to explain you the structure of an umbrella issue. 
and why we think it's very um, a useful way for everyone to start contributing to the frame. So all the issues starts with like a description of the problem. For CodeGen specifically, we uh, opened the, um, the issue in October last year. And so it also participated in the October Fest. I don't know if you know what it is, but basically it allows you to get uh, a badge if you contribute to at least with at least four pull requests to different repos. You can have your badge into your, your GitHub account. So uh, maybe it helps you landing better jobs if you want to change. Um, and then there is a description of the problem space. For Cogen specifically, Cogen is a part of the new architecture. So um, it, it is basically a tool that we developed to uh, allow you to write your JavaScript specification for modules and components once. And then through CodeGen, we basically generate the native code and the platform code interfaces, of course, because we cannot generate the implementation. But um, it allows us to make sure that your JavaScript API does not go out of sync with your native implementation. So it is a tool meant to help you in like moving fast when developing for the new architecture. The problem here is that for historical reasons, Cogen has been developed for in different moments in time. So we have difference between how we parse stuff from flow or from TypeScript or how we parse stuff from for components and uh, modules. So the goal of this umbrella is to basically try to simplify the code base, unify it, remove code duplication, remove, uh, make it more maintainable basically. The third section of any umbrella issue is usually devoted to testing. We are really interested in making you as self-sufficient as possible. So we think that testing is an important part of it. We try to put their instruction on how to test your changes, uh, which command to run, how to set up everything, and yeah, commands and set up everything so that you can be autonomous in, in like uploading your pull request and have it up updated as soon as possible. And the final part is the task uh, section, where the, it begins with some instruction on how to claim tasks and uh, what are the expectations, so how long we I think is feasible for you to like work on the task and when we expect a pull request open, basically. And the list of tasks. So in this example, we have a couple of tasks taken by one person, and we try to like um, recognize the work of everyone with like the attribution and the commit where it landed. And also a couple of tasks that are up for grabs so people can just claim them and start working on them. But we're going to see how it works in a minute. The important thing that I want to stress of these tasks is that they are very small. Uh, they are meant to be uh, your entry point in the contribution journey. So they are very like well defined, the boundaries are clear. What we expect from the pull request is small changes. So you get confident that it's going to land and it's going to work for everyone. These are examples of other tasks that we had uh, in, in other umbrella issues. So for example, it could be an implementation of a, of a props that is already, has already other similar props already implemented. So you have examples that you can follow through and make sure that like, everything makes sense or small changes in configuration that like, should be easy to, to like, apply. But how all this process unroll, basically, uh, if you want to start contributing and you want to like, actually put your code there, what do you, do you have to do? So the first part is how to claim a task. So let's, keeping the code gen as a working example, we navigate to the website, to the repository, we scroll and we find the task that we like, for example, 104. And in the task, as I was saying, is self-contained. There are usually code pointers that we can look up to, to make sure that like, we really understand what we have to do. In this case, if we click on the couple of links here, we can see like two parsing code, one for flow, one for TypeScript. They are very similar as you can see, so there is no real reason why we have this code duplication. The goal of this task is to put everything together and make sure that everything still works. Um, then, so we found the task that we like and the first step is to claim it. To claim it, we, the process is as simple as commenting in the issue 
and one meta engineer, in this case myself as well, uh, will assign the task to, uh, to you. We also make sure to award the work, so we assign the task formally in the issue, and at that point you can start actually um, working on the task. If you never did that first, you need to first fork the repository, so you can create your own copy of React Native under your own profile. The process is very simple, just click on the button on GitHub, and follow, follow, after following the dialogues, you end up with your copy of, Git, of the repository in your personal uh, account. You can see that because in the top left corner, there is my username instead of Facebook. So that's my personal copy of the repo. We need to clone the repository and run Yarn to install all the dependencies that are needed to run code gen and testing. And finally, we start writing our code. So the IDE we suggest to use for writing code when we work with uh, JavaScript uh, and Flow in this case is, of course, Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's very useful because we can have a terminal there. If you're an LS engineer, you're not really used to having a terminal in Xcode, so that's a nice thing to have. Um, and there are like shortcuts to go straight to the file that we need to edit. If we open the utils.js file, which is one that the task asks us to, to modify, and it's the first time that we open Visual Studio Code, we can see these like red lines highlighting that uh, there is something that's not really as it should be. That's because CodeGen is written in Flow, and by default, Visual Studio Code doesn't come with a Flow uh, interpreter. So we can add a package to our uh, Visual Studio Code installation, and there are a few lines of setup that we need to run in order to make sure that everything works, but after those small setup, the done lines are gone, and we can start actually modifying the code that we need to for our task. So we can like factor it out and use the new function in the code site. The point that I want to stress here is not just like these code changes, which are like just an example, and we can also find probably better implementation for that, but just that like the change are, are very small. We just moved away a function and use you know, some code in a function and use that function into the existing code base. And this is true for almost every kind of tasks that are in our umbrella issues. So for example, this is a real pull request opened by another user. As you can see, it's like 11 lines of code, six files touched, but because of imports mainly, or another um, pull request, similar kind of uh, task, but still like 26 lines of code, eight file changes, mostly import. So they are small and they are meant to, for you to be like your step into the uh, door of React Native contributions. The next step, we made our changes. We want to be sure that everything like works. So we use Jest to run our test. Jest is a JavaScript uh, test engine that, we, that is, comes basically uh, pre-configured with the React Native repository and we can just run Yarn just React Native code gen to run all the tests in our uh, in our code gen uh, repository. Other umbrella issues has different kind of testing instruction, but more or less are all in of that type of thing. So just running a command and see that all the tests are passing. Running the command, we start the uh, the test suits, and after a few seconds, we have the results. One thing that I wanted to highlight here is that CodeGen is pretty well tested. We have like 54 test suits and more than 2,500 tests, which give us good confidence that our changes are not breaking anything. Uh, there is a small thing that I want to highlight for Jazz that I really, really like when I have to write my test in JavaScript. And this is the watch option. Uh, it's not something that I found often outside of this ecosystem. So we can just run yarn jest react native uh, code gen dash dash watch and it will start a jest daemon that will observe our file. So instead of like making a change, save the file, run the command, with this change we just have to write the code and save the file. And the test will run automatically after every change that we push in our code. So it doesn't seem but like it it builds up and it saves you a lot of time 
when you have to write tests. Everything is, we, we wrote our changes, all tests are passing, so we need to commit our changes. The, the thing that I want to point out is that the first step is to create a branch, and in React Native, the, we try to follow this convention of your username and the name of the branch. This it makes it easier for everyone, like when you have to look through your branches, to figure out immediately like your changes and like pick the right branch that you want to work on. At this point, we need to open up a pull request. Maybe this flow is pretty like you are comfortable with, but just opening uh, GitHub, we can click on compare and pull request. And when using our fork, GitHub will automatically um, configure the pull request to be open against the main repository. There is also a, a template that we mm, shipped with the framework, and this is prepared for you to, to fill up with all the details. So in this case, for example, uh, we can fill up the task that you claimed and the changelog. The changelog is a important part. It has to follow this specific format for every commit that lands in React Native, because we have tooling that like process the, the, the changelog uh, automatically if like all the comments are good. Um, every, just to give you an idea, between every version of React Native there are be between 800 and 1,000 commits. So you can imagine why we need a tool like that because like going manually through 800 commits is painful. So we have our PR, is in draft mode, and when that happens, our Circle CI pipeline will start running against your changes. Uh, the, the, the pipeline is pretty powerful. We, have, we are covering mo most of the use case, base use cases that we uh, need to make sure never breaks. And there are also some checks on like linting and stuff. So for example, I forgot to do something and Danger is screaming at me that I need to fix it. Uh, by looking at like the messages that Danger prints on, on the pull request itself, I forgot to run prettier. But this gives me the opportunity to show you another cool thing of React Native. Net React, um, within the React Native package.json file, there are a bunch of scripts that can be helpful for you to like automate your daily work, workflow, basically. So in this case, what we are interested in too is prettier, but there are other commands that, that you can explore, basically. But running prettier, uh, it will automatically fix all like my JavaScript unprettier things. And the, as soon as we push again our changes, Silco CI will run again. In this case, uh, everything is successful. So you can see 64 successful checks. Now they are even more because we added a few more checks in the uh, last couple of weeks. And we can mark the PR as ready for review. When marking the PR ready for review, uh, there is tooling that connects like GitHub with the internal system and Meta. So a Meta engineer will be basically automatically uh, ping that there is a new pull request that needs to be checked. We try to stay on top of pull requests. So, and especially for this umbrella issue, there is always one person that is in charge of making sure that uh, those changes are actually um, taken care of, so reviewed and eventually landed. In this case, the PR has been approved. And so the meta engineer, in this case myself again, has imported the, uh, the pull request inside our internal system. We have some uh, CI run the trans internally, which is slightly different from what is outside, because like, as I say, I was saying, meta is using graph native also internally, so you have to make sure that all the changes that we bring in makes everything still working also for the internal system. But when that happens, your commit will arrive in the like, top line of like last commit on the main repo. And that's how everyone can become a React Native contributor. So let me talk to you about some future opportunities that we are preparing. Uh, one is already improving CodeGen, the umbrella issue I've been using for this presentation as an example. Uh, yesterday evening I pushed some other like 20 tasks for you to start playing with that so if you want to try it out. Uh, there, another way 
that can be helpful like for you to start contributing to the framework is by searching for the label good first issues. And these are similar tasks to what we have in umbrella issues. So they are small, self-contained. They don't require a lot of context, uh, but they are not like, we, we couldn't really group them in a single umbrella. So they are out there in the wild. As I was saying at the beginning of the presentation, uh, React Native is not just the core framework. So there are issues also in our um, dependencies and in our uh, libraries. For example, there are issues that can be taken on from the CLI, but I just took the CLI as an example of another library that, are, that is into the ecosystem. Or we have this discussion and proposal uh, forum, basically where we push you know, an RFC of things that we want to do to improve uh, React Native as a whole. So if you have ideas on what you would like to see inside the, the main framework, or you just want to discuss other ideas, as ideas that are already there, that's the right play, uh, place to go. There is also a shining new uh, umbrella issues that we just opened last week. Um, my colleague Arushi opened that, actually is also here in Portland, so if you're curious to know more about that, uh, look for her. She would be very happy to, to talk with any of you about that. And yeah, it's shared the same kind of principles, so the goal here is to make as easy as possible to kickstart a new React Native application and to, in general, improve the onboarding experience, so it could also mean somehow improving upgrades. I know that some pain point out there, and we're working on that. And so at this point, there, I have only one question for you. I convince you to at least try to contribute to React Native. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, thank you. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Um, as Ken was saying, there are other colleagues from Meta here Please chase us, ask questions. We are here like, to listen your, about your use cases and what you find painful or what is working well for you in React Native. So please do it, like use us for questions and answers, basically. Thank you very much.